Hey, what's up guys? Maki here playing Numa Breath of Life. This is a walkthrough speed run of the game from the very beginning all the way to the very end. I am recording this via Twitch. However, I don't have the chat up, nor do I really know what's going on on that end. But I will be just uploading this straight to YouTube after I complete it. The game should take me hopefully less than like 50 minutes. I've played through it a few times. And this is not a walkthrough you would want to watch just for fun. This is going to be kind of a speed run, solutions only kind of walkthrough. So if you're looking to enjoy the game, this is probably not the best video for you. But if you're looking for a solution to a certain puzzle that you might be stuck on, this is probably what you're going to want to watch. I'm going to be going fast. Uh, I'll try my best to explain puzzles as they happen. Um, some of the puzzles I'm just going to be kind of running through and explaining as I do that. Um, I won't be kind of sitting at every puzzle uh, waiting for minutes and minutes. Um, to kind of explain how all of them, all the intricacies of how they work. This is the prologue. You're going to just wait and this white line is going to appear. Um, as soon as you can move, just walk forward and continue to walk forward for about one to two minutes. Um, that's about it. You obviously have controls that you can set. You can set your invertedness and your sensitivity as well as your audio stuff. And I've also put on subtitles at the bottom of the screen so you guys can keep track of that. I have lowered the commentator's voice or the narrator's voice so that you guys can hear me a little better than you can hear him. Um, and I've kind of left some of the music and the sound effects in there too. So the prologue, it's all about just walking forward. Literally, I don't think there's anything else to it. Um, hopefully you don't need my help through the prologue or else you're really going to be struggling in later parts of the game. So like I mentioned, um, this is going to be a speed run. I'm not going to be explaining too much, but I'll try my best in this wall. Just throw yourself against the wall that triggers a um, narration and the button will appear to the ground. Walk up to the button, interact with it. And that'll uh, move the wall. You'll have to use A to jump over. Um, and then walk forward. There's a collectible in this room, I think. But it's not needed for anything. Um, I think it's just kind of like an extra thing you can collect if, you, if you're a fan. Uh, just continue to walk forward. You'll get into this part of the mansion, which has colors. Um, and then we're going to be doing basically our first puzzle, which is extremely easy. Um, you'll come into this room and you'll see that... Uh, there's a switch just pull it that'll open up the stairs for you you can walk directly okay. up the stairs you'll notice that these bridges aren't aligned so we'll walk into the back room here and we'll use the three switches to rotate um, rotate the bridge in order so that we can walk by it so just hit each button one time and then the bridge will align turn around walk back to where we came from and the bridge should now work perfectly fine and we can just straight up walk across. If you do fall down, there's a staircase to get back up, so don't worry. And that is the end of the prologue. When you come, when you walk into this, you will unlock one achievement worth a hundred gamer score for completing the prologue. And once this releases on PlayStation and they keep the same list, you'll probably also unlock a trophy. Um, I'll be showing you also the additional spirit and body puzzles on chapters two and three. I will not be showing the soul puzzle as that one's a little bit more complex and it wouldn't make sense for me to show it in a stream. Um, so you can just check out my YouTube channel um, to kind of learn about that puzzle. But I'll be showing you as much as you can possibly get in one playthrough. Um, so don't worry about that. Uh, the loading screens tend to take a little bit of time in between levels. Um, about a minute or so. So you want to keep that in mind. This is chapter one. Just walk forward. If you're looking at the eye, the, this gate will open. If you're not looking at the eye, it will close. You're going to turn right. If you look at both eyes, the gate opens. If you don't look at both of them, the gate closes. Just make sure they're open enough so that when you start walking forward, you can get through once they start closing. Next up in this next room, there's going to be an eye on the right hand side. Just make sure you look at it um, and that'll open the gate. You're going to have to keep looking at it while you move sideways through the gate or else you can't get through the gate. Now there's a spiral staircase. You can walk down or you can do what I do, which is just jump into the railing and you actually... F oh, I actually screwed it up. Wow. You can just... There you go. You can just jump over the railing and fall to the very bottom. You'll see this wooden door in front of me. What you want to do is stare at the at the top of the ceiling for about 5 to 10 seconds. Um, I think if you listen very closely, you can actually hear the door opening all the way. Then look down and walk forward. Now once we're in this room, um, this first bookcase on the left hand side, 
Just grab it, pull it out. The door is right there, so just stare at the eye and walk backwards through that door. You don't have to actually walk backwards the whole time, as long as you're standing near the door and walk backwards through it. Um, as you kind of... Uh, you have to be looking at the, the eye to open the door. Now we're in this room with three glasses. We have to raise that platform so we can see... Um, through the through the circles so just take the lever and move it to about halfway maybe a little bit more than halfway and then when you stand at this door here you should be able to see all three of them through the lens that'll open the door behind me so just walk backwards and you'll actually walk directly into the end of the level and that's going to be the end of chapter one that'll also unlock an achievement worth 100 gamer score for you um, and if you're on the PlayStation 4 uh, once this game releases that will also um, get an achievement for you, a uh, trophy rather. Um, so now we're loading up chapter two. I'll be doing the first thing I'll do in chapter two is I'll show you how to get the um, spirit achievement or trophy. Um, I'll do that in the first minute and then I'll just continue through the level. So as soon as you start the level, walk forward, you'll see that flame directly in front of me. If you look at it, it's on. If you look away and look back, it turns off. And you can toggle the flame like that. What we're going to need to do is toggle five total flames um, and make sure they're on. So for this wall, just go up to it, pull it out, and then look away when you walk towards it so that it doesn't pull back in. Make sure this flame is on for the last time you see it. I, so I'm leaving it on and then walking across through this room. There's two flames right here, one on each side. Just uh, kind of leave them for now. They're not that important. Go down the stairs. If you jump and time it properly, you can actually skip them entirely. Walking forward through this door will open it. For this door, you have to walk backwards to open it. So go up to it. Start walking backwards. Turn around. Start walking backwards through it. And that's how you can get through that door. This right here is one of the flames. So just look at it. Turn it off. Turn it on. Leave it on and walk back to where we came from. And then you'll see this flame. Make sure that's on. Toggle it. I'll toggle it off. Toggle it on. And back up the stairs we go where we just came. This is a little bit of extra work just to get that uh, spirit achievement. At the top of the stairs, make sure both of these flames are on. And once those both flames, both of those flames are on, the door will open. Now that the door opens, we're going to have to jump and look away from the eye as we're jumping in order to raise the bridge. So jump and look away and the ver- oh, I just screwed that one up. So I'm just jumping and then looking away after I jump in order to bring this up. Come up here. This pillar will come out. This is the pillar that will unlock the achievement. Just look at it for two seconds and it'll pop. Um, so I'm just going to get out of the room now and walk back down to where I came from. And complete the rest of the level, which should take not that long. Um, so again, down the stairs. The, this is obvious. Um, walk forward through this door. The second door, you have to walk backwards to make it open, and then you have to turn around so that it doesn't see you approaching. So just walk up to it, come backwards to make it open, turn around, and walk through the door backwards. Um, we're going to continue forward through this room. Just look at the eye to make the door open. Uh, this bridge, we're going to have to rotate it. The eye is on the other side, so just drop down, and then... Turn the, turn the bridge by looking at the eye and then showing, kind of uh, moving your character to where the bridge wants to go. Look away from the eye when you walk away so the bridge doesn't start rotating on you. And then walk across the bridge. Watch out if you have the eye on the inside of the bridge right there. Um, it might see you as you start walking through and uh, you might fall off. So just watch out and that's as simple as that gets. Look at that eye in order to uh, open this door. Walk through it sideways. Once we come to this area, drop down. Pull this bridge by looking at it and then walking backwards. Um, and then for this bridge, we're going to have to look at it and push it forwards. Um, 
creation is to thank them to thank myself. Alright, up the, once they're both connected, go up the bridge. Make sure you don't make eye contact with uh, the first bridge or else you push it back. Walk across, watch out for the eye contact with the second bridge or else you also push it back. And walk through this last door. Actually, not the last door, there's one more puzzle. I believe in this level. Um, the last puzzle here coming up, I believe, is the rotational bridge puzzle. Nope, it's a different one. For this one, look at the eye and then back up into the corner of the room to raise the bridge. You have, to, you have to do it at least twice to get to the top, so don't look at the eye, walk back into the middle of the room, look at it and push away again, and it'll raise. Now don't look at the eye, walk up the bridge backwards, and then make sure you turn, don't look at the eye as you're walking by it, turn around, come through here, look at the eye, open the door, and you're through. Um, that's going to be how to do that puzzle. The next puzzle, I believe, is the small rotational platforms. Um, I may be wrong again. Let's see here. Yeah. So for this one, you can rotate the uh, platform by the way you look at the eye. So just walk forward, and then you're going to have to spin yourself around 180 degrees. Look down and away, and then you're going to have to jump across, spin so that you're 180 degrees away. Like towards the door. Look here. You're going to have to spin this platform a whole bunch. Alright. And then through here. And then this final room. Just make sure you take a note as to where you're entering from. What you're going to have to do is spin the room and you see that little... You see that little texture poking out in the window? That's another door. You're going to have to spin the room so that door ends up behind you. So walk into the room. Stand in the middle. This is how I like to do it. And then turn the eye um, using both sticks 180 degrees. So basically just flip it. And then if you turn around, if the doors are aligned, you should be able to walk through and you'll find the ending of the level. That's how you complete chapter 2. Completing chapter 2... Um, as soon as we enter here, um, we'll gain you a 100 point achievement as well as a trophy if the list is the same on the PlayStation. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Loading up chapter three. Um, I'll show you how to do chapter three and then I will also, um, I'll be showing you how to get the body achievement or trophy, which is kind of the extra... Um, miscellaneous achievement that is missable and then I'll just be showing you how to continue the rest of the level so as soon as we load up any minute now what will happen is look forward for this puzzle it looks a little bit confusing but basically it's all about whether something's on your screen or not so if you see this one with the white light above it if you if you get it off your screen and then go back it turns black if you take those two that are black they turn white just keep doing that to make them all the same color. So as you can see, now they are all black, all off my screen, all on my screen makes them all white, and the door will open. This one has five eyes. Each eye has a tone that it creates, and you have to just look at the tones in order. You can also use the Roman numerals at the bottom. Basically, that's number one. Walk backwards. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. And then that's number five. That'll open the door right here. Now this one has four clocks. Again, I'm not going to get into details here, but if you stand in this corner and make sure you can see all four clocks on your screen at the same time, make sure they align to all say 12 o'clock. Um, and then run forward into the pool through this hole and look at this clock. If you do that fast enough, it'll open the door for you. I think you have about five seconds to do that. Now we're going to come down into here and we have a puzzle on the floor. And you'll see that obviously we can't get the object to where we want to go. Um, so we're going to move it here, look up on the roof, and then you can move it um, on the roof. So the solution, I'm doing it, but you can figure it out yourself. It's not that difficult. Um, and eventually when you move this piece into the final area right here, oh, any minute now. It'll open the door behind me here. 
For this one, walk into the room, look at the board directly in front of you, and match the buttons uh, with the pattern on the other chest. So for this one, all I have to do is make that one white. Now keep eye contact with the pattern. Look away from it, and don't look at it by accident again. And then look across. You'll notice that that pattern is going to be different. If you break eye contact and look at it again, the patterns will change. But when you have both patterns matching, the water will drain. Now, what we're going to want to do to continue the level is use this rotational puzzle. But quickly before we do that, I'm going to show you how to do the um, body achievement. I screwed it up already. Um, basically, I'll show you... Uh, every active cell is... If a cell is on your screen, it's active. And you can only grow cells if all of the cells on your screen have room to grow. So basically, if I, if I only look at the top cells and move forward, only the top cells will grow. If I look at only these corner cells, only the corner cells will grow. If I look at only these corner cells and push forward, only these corner cells will grow. And then uh, just look at this one only and um, fill all the spaces. I hope that made sense. Uh, there's a full guide on my channel if you're kind of confused. That'll open up the door behind you. Uh, once you open up the door behind you, just go through the hallway, up the stairs, to the balcony, you'll find this black planet. Use the cursor to bring the planet in front of the sun. Don't go too fast or you'll lose track of it. Once you block the sun, it'll turn to nighttime and it'll bring up this pillar. Look at the pillar for a few seconds in order to unlock the body achievement. That is the two miscellaneous puzzles. The last one's the spirit one. As I said, I will not be showing it in this video as it makes no sense uh, in terms of uh, showing it in a playthrough. Um, in order to continue the actual level, though, what we'll need to do is come to this puzzle and uh, figure out the wheel. So the way I like to do it, figure it out, is um, basically what we'll need is you'll need a yellow. And then to the right of the yellow, you'll need a light blue. And the only way, like this yellow, if it came here, this one wouldn't have a blue. If this yellow came here, this one wouldn't have a blue. So the only way that it'll match is if this yellow comes on this yellow. So I'm going to rotate the entire board to do that, and then just rotate the pieces. And that should have locked, but it did not. Um, okay. Oh. You also have to have the inside corners matching colors. So that's, that's how you do that puzzle. Once that puzzle is done, you're going to walk back up the stairs, and the door um, that was blocked before should be open. I don't remember if there's any more puzzles in Chapter 3 after that. Uh, nope, so that's the end of Chapter 3. Walk into the grate to unlock your 100-point achievement or your trophy. Um, and then continue forward to Chapter 4. Chapter 4 isn't too bad from if my memory serves me correctly. Um, and then Chapter 5 is definitely the longest one in the game. That probably takes like half the time right there. Okay, chapter four, this one, we walk forward. Um, this switch will flip-flop the doors. So basically just look at it, look away, and then uh, you'll flip-flop the doors. Just make sure you get through before that first door closes on you. Now, what this, this is also another flip-flop door. So what we'll want to do is um, flip-flop it as we walk through. Um, actually, just go through uh, when it's open. Come up here, and then flip-flop this first door, which makes a bridge that you can walk across. So walk across that bridge, and then use this switch. Now that these are both down, and the third one, which we can't see, is up, come back here to flip-flop both of those. So basically, once these are both down, uh, they're tied to each other and they only move together. So when they're both down, flip-flop this one. And then the third one is opened by the switch that I walked... Oh, I keep screwing it up now. Um, and then when the light passes through, that's when this gate will open. And then you can walk through. Continuous makes more sense than discrete, surely. For this one, all we need to do is rotate all the eyes to face the door. Um, some of the... Some of the areas are actually connected directly to each other. 
So keep that in mind. Now that all five are facing the door, just stand at the door and make sure you can see all five on your screen at the same time. And that'll open up the door behind me. Just keep walking backwards to pass under the door. Now we're in the final room and we are done. That is the end of chapter four. Now chapter five, probably the longest. It's going to take me like 20 minutes, but it's not too bad. There's one part that's a little bit uh, fidgety, and I'll show you guys exactly what my personal, um, what I would personally recommend doing there. We're just going to do the paths in order. So... Um, starting with chapter 5, whenever it loads here. We're just going to walk straight forward. So many doors. The path still appears. Turn left, we're going to go into the first house. Now, this is the the most frustrating puzzle in the game. Basically, you can flip-flop the tiles by looking at them. So that changes them entirely, right? So what I like to do is work from a corner that you like, and then work your way out. Okay? So that's how that's how I like to do it. Work from a corner. Make sure that this corner one closest to me, you don't accidentally lose sight of, or else you basically have to restart. And I screwed it up already, which makes it like ten times more difficult once you screw it up. But you can always fix it if you're if you're lucky. It's a little bit difficult to do this puzzle because every TV is a little different. So you don't actually know where the edge of your screen perfectly is. Um, this game also doesn't allow you to like um, select the edges of your monitor. So this one can be a little difficult once you start getting into the corner ones up at the top. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Okay. All right, now now it's just the last two. Uh, all right, now that it's the last row, just right. If it's ever a row, just uh, go perpendicular to that row. Once all the tiles are white, this door will open. Once you just go into the door, turn right and hug the wall, and run at least one full lap while hugging the wall. Make sure you only hit each tile once don't overlap a tile once you come into this corner you'll have a loading symbol in the top right means you've completed the puzzle there's a solution for those wondering uh, this will open this door that comes up this staircase and at the top of the staircase we will see a basically a circular treadmill with rings in it and all we need to do for this one I mean there's a picture and there's a you can kind of get complicated with it but you'll see these uh, wooden beams just uh, line up the line up the wooden beams That'll make the picture as easy as possible for you. Um, and then you can obviously rotate these pieces both ways. Once you line it up, it'll line up perfectly for you. Um, it'll kind of help you. It'll open up this door with this puzzle that's definitely the hardest puzzle in the game um, in terms of getting it right. Like there's not really, there's only one solution, but the solution's kind of difficult. Basically what we need to do is get to the fourth story of that one right there. Um, I like to kind of work from the top and go down when I start. So that's how we're going to get to the top. Now we need to get across to there. So we're going to rotate this one to get across. And then we're going to need to get across that. So let's rotate this one. And then we're going to come down here into there. So we're going to need to rotate this one. 
And then we're going to come into here. We can't actually walk directly into that one um, because there is no opening in it. So we're going to have to come out through there, up here. And then we're going to rotate this to see what our options are. Um, did I screw this up already? I feel like I screwed this up. Um, let's see this piece right here, I think might be the problem. Oh, great. Uh, one sec here, I'll figure this out. All right, yeah, 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 okay, okay. All right, this should be the solution, I'm hoping. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, we're good. So I was doing it right. Um, you're going to come down the ramp from the top, come across. Um, that one's just screwed up, but that one, um, that one's fixed. Um, you're coming down from the fourth floor, then across, across, down, down, and then you have to go back up, come across, and then back down because this is the only pillar with an opening in it. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna go up to the second story. We're gonna go across. Then we have to go back down into this uh, pillar. That's where this puzzle is basically gonna start, but this is the only way to get in here. And then we can finally start going back up. So you're basically just going in a circle from uh, corner to corner to corner. Uh, eventually we'll make it to the third floor. You'll come across come across to the third floor again then you can go up the ramp um, and hit the button this is gonna complete path one which is the longest path you can just jump down directly and um, yeah unfortunately we have to actually walk back through all of the stuff we just did um, so that takes a little bit of time but not too bad I think the second third and fourth path are from what I remember pretty easy All right, uh, once we're out to the first path, turn left to go to the second path. It has a huge Roman numeral sign on it. Um, so this one's pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna have to get up there. Each one of these rings is represented by a handle. This handle on the very right-hand side is your um, furthest ring. So all you have to do is just use these to incrementally uh, go less and less. On the fourth one, I would recommend going about halfway. And then sometimes it just takes a little bit of trial and error. Like this, this first step is too high, so I'm just going to lower it. And then there's going to be one step that's too high right there, which is the fourth step. So I'm just going to take the third one here and uh, just adjust it a little bit. And now they seem more evenly spaced out. I should be able to, to jump to the top. All right, now there's this tube puzzle. What we need to do for the tube puzzle is just match both sides. So this is how you match it, and the gate will open. That one's pretty simple. I mean, just, just look at it. Um, once we're in here, you stand in the middle. It's gonna, it, it's waiting, the story's waiting for it to trigger. You'll see a small speck of light. Stand in the middle, look up, and then rotate your character. That'll open the aperture of the hole, and that'll complete um, number two, which is right there. So now we're gonna go back to path three. Down the stairs, back to where we came from a little bit. 
Um, path, so you'll see path one and path two are done. We're looking to complete all four. So path three, uh, I'm trying to trigger my memory here. I don't remember it, but I think I should, should remember once we get there. Um, okay. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to look at the sun through all three of the lenses. All three of the lenses will line up right here, 90 degrees away from the button, but they only align every certain amount of rotations. The smallest, the one on the top, is the one that rotates the slowest. So just stop it when that one's 90 degrees to your left. Um, so obviously I did it too early, but these three will align when this uh, middle one, uh, the most inner one, is uh, right 90 degrees away from me. So you just kind of have to align them properly. And now that they're all aligned, you can look at the sun through all three lenses, which will open the gate. And we're going to have to just kind of run through that gate once it's fully open. Now this one's a little bit confusing, but basically there's Roman numerals in front of all of these uh, lenses. And what you have to do is to activate a lens, you have to look at the amount of suns that the Roman numerals say there are that you have to look through. So for this one to turn red, you look through one sun. If you look through two, it turns white. Um, so this one needs three. Basically, the best way to do this is just to stand behind the one in the corner that says three and then look through it to make sure you see three. And then each one of the other ones will see one. So the one I'm looking through, the one closest to me right in front of my screen has three and the other ones have one each. That'll open the gate. Now, in this room, all you do is just run circles around this to fill it up. You'll see that the rings are kind of building as we rotate around it. And you're just going to want to keep rotating around it until it completes itself. Um, and then once it completes itself, we can run back to path number four and complete the level. All right, so now you'll see that light activates that number three. We're going to run back to the beginning now. Path number four. I don't remember it by memory, but let's see. Let's see what happens when we get in here. Um, okay, this is a bridge. So basically, there's really only one solution to the bridge, um, and I'll just show you it, I guess. Sorry, keep over rotating. No. That is the solution to the bridge right there. That piece is not really necessary. I think on this piece there is actually a collectible if you really want it, but um, that's the solution right there to the bridge. And then you can access the bridge right here. Um, just walk through the bridge, obviously. If you fall off or you have the wrong combination, uh, you can just walk back up the stairs and, and go back to the board and remake the bridge. Okay, for this staircase, uh, you'll notice that if you approach it while looking at it, it will actually disappear. So what you need to do is walk up it backwards. It's a little difficult to get it right, but if you walk up it backwards, you'll make it to the top, press the button, that activates door number four. And now we can walk back to that main large door and um, walk through it. And I believe that's the end of chapter five. I don't think chapter six is too bad either. Okay, I can't jump that high. Um, turn back to where we came from. Back to where we came from. Keep going. And the main door now has all four switches activated, so it's going to open for us. And that is the end of Chapter 5, definitely the longest and hardest chapter in the game. Um, that'll unlock an achievement worth 100 gamer score for completing chapter 5. Um, that'll also unlock a trophy whenever this releases for the PlayStation, assuming that they keep the same stuff going. Um, beginning of chapter 6, 
I'm again chapter six. I'm going to be showing you the solutions more so than explaining how they work. So uh, I'm pretty quick at this one. So just kind of pay attention to what's going on, and we shouldn't have too many problems once we get on here. As soon as the chapter loads, walk forward whenever this happens. Do, 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 do. All right, I feel a vibration. Just walk forward. You'll see a one and a two. You need to complete the first puzzle and the second puzzle in order to open that door. Um, this looks like a huge gap. If you walk forward, you'll see a small kind of shadow bridge. Uh, walk forward halfway through. And then go to the left first, to the first um, room. To do this puzzle, all we need to do is light only the middle ball. So what you're going to want to do is stand in the middle and then jump. And that's going to complete that puzzle. The solution to that puzzle, if you actually wanted to know how to figure it out, is on the roof. Uh, you can see the pattern you need to input. Next, go across to the second room. You'll see a sundial. For the sundial puzzle, all you need to do is be patient. It actually triggers a dialogue about being patient. So just stand here and uh, observe the sundial for like 20 seconds. After it completes one full rotation, you have completed the puzzle. Um, so as soon as it rotates one full time, as you see it happening here, you'll see a, a saving icon in the top uh, right of the screen, and you'll also hear the sound of the puzzle completing itself. Um, so now we can go back to the light bridge, turn right, forward, through this door, and we're going to go to the third puzzle. Again, this is another puzzle that I completely know the solution to, and I'll try to explain it as we go. Um, it's not too bad, but basically, there are tiles on the ground. If you, they're, they're default white. If you step on the tile, it turns black. If you step on a black tile, it turns white. The solution to each room is on the opposite side. So this is the solution to the room behind me. What is my nature, though? Unitary, bipartite, or tripartite, or something other? How could I know? I have my words. Words are the product of a mind. Therefore, it follows that I think. I think, therefore, I am. Cogito ergo zoom. I move, so I have a body. Maybe a spirit. Oh, I missed that last piece over there. A connection with the world I cannot know. That's the solution to this side. Or this side, I like to actually go around the corner. And then just tap this corner. So that you don't have to, uh... Do too much. And then just walk forward three spaces. Walk back one space. Left, uh, right one space. And that's the solution to this puzzle, which will uh, complete puzzle three. Now you have to go back to the button. Um, click it. Rotate the clock tower, and now you will be allowed to go through door number three. For door number four, uh, puzzle number four, it's not too bad. I'll, you'll, I'll show you as we go here. Um, you're going to have to go into this. Each button rotates whatever you're rotating in that direction. So we have to get the door from there to the kind of right-hand side. Um, so yeah, you can do it in three button presses. I think you can even do it in two if you know what you're doing, but that's how I do it. Um, this is where you can do the start the beginning of... Um, You'll see there's a staircase under there. This is where you can start the beginning of the soul puzzle, but I'm not going to be doing that right now because it requires you to like quit out a lot and uh, some other stuff. Just keep walking through here. You'll see all these bulbs. Just kind of keep a little bit of a mental note as to where they are if you want. But basically at the top here, you'll see a uh, blue flame. And you have to get that blue flame from ball to ball. And the way to do that is to look at the flame through the ball that you want it to go to. And it'll always go to the ball that is closest to the viewer. So that's how you can transport it from ball to ball. And um, again, ball to ball. 
And we're going to be bringing it back to where we came from. Walk across the bridge. Uh, bring the flame with you. And then our goal is to bring the flame into the into here with us. And now I have to rotate this door to the other side. So one, two, we'll bring the door there. And then just rotate the door. One, two, we'll bring the door onto our um, plane. So now what you're going to need to do is get the flame into here, into this last ball. And then it's going to open this. You have to follow this eye. It's going to go left, then it's going to go up, then it's going to go right. If you lose sight of it, it will respawn back in that hole. You just have to make sure you get, um, you keep sight of it until it opens that door for you. Um. And now that we've rotated it to have the door here, we walk forward and just watch these two eyes to open the door. This is kind of created in a way to kind of uh, take a little bit of extra time so that you can listen to the story. So that's why the door is opening so slowly. There's actually, there's no way to really open it faster and you can't really sneak under it or anything. You actually have to wait for the door to completely open 100% and then I think it locks and then you can walk forward and complete chapter six. Uh, obviously, completing Chapter 6 will unlock um, a 100-point achievement as well as a trophy uh, when it launches on the PlayStation. So now that the door is just about fully opened, just walk through into the vent, and that'll complete Chapter 6. Since we have some loading screens here, I knew I, w I said I wouldn't um, really talk much about Twitch in the stream because I'm using this as a YouTube video, but... There's a few people who have followed the channel um, that I should give a quick shout out to. Let me just get my email open here real quick. Um, any second now. All right, quick shout out to. Sorry, <laughs> Moogle Moogle F Seven, Master X Skunk, Marion MRP, Dextrofan, YK Jaco. Dark Sagist, Mr. Lister, and Evil Terror. Thank you guys for following the channel. Um, this is the epilogue. This one's pretty simple. This is mostly a storytelling scene. So there's not many puzzles to really understand here. Um, you just have to kind of play the game. Um, it's also made in such a way that there's like walking forward. And it's timed with the dialogue so that um, as you kind of approach the end, the dialogue kind of cycles through as well. Um, I'm just kind of trying to talk because I don't want you guys, if you're going to be playing this on your own, I don't want to spoil the story uh, by letting you hear the dialogue in the bottom, although I have left on subtitles just in case you're interested. For these rocks, literally just look at them and they will raise. Um, the only thing about them is some of them take a while to raise, enough so you can walk under them. Um, so just make sure there's enough room for you to get under. This rock as well, you're just going to have to look at it for a few seconds in order to raise it. Um, and you'll start having the kind of character in the game start taking control of you, and he'll he'll try to stop you from walking forward. So you're gonna have to start fighting that. Um, he'll actually only let you like he'll only let you walk certain ways uh, at certain times as well. So you'll want to keep that in mind. Just uh, kind of fight against whatever they're making you do. And make sure you just keep looking at the eyes and walking under as soon as you can. You don't you don't have to like move the rock. You just have to look at it, if that makes sense. And now I'm fighting. You have to like. Um, after I fought that, this I think this is one of the last rocks here. Um, 
Just keep fighting, just keep fighting the screen as best as you can in order to keep raising the rock. And then as soon as there is enough clearance, just walk under. You'll see this uh, orange light. Just walk forward and drop down into it. Now once you fall, you should be able to spot a tree. If you walk forward, you'll see uh, an apple on that tree. There's actually collectible in this area as well, but um, go up to the tree and press X to interact with it. And that is basically the end of the game right there. Um, you're going to have about a minute of cinematic, and then after the cinematic, you can press A to kind of accept the end of the game, and that'll finish off the game, and you'll get the achievement worth 150 gamer score for completing the game um, and it'll put you back into the main menu so if you have followed this guide this walkthrough this speed run of the solutions to all the puzzles in the game um, you, you can finish this game in about an hour and you will get if you follow this video 950 out of a thousand gamer score and the only thing you're gonna have left is for completing the soul puzzle in order to complete the soul puzzle, I'm going to uh, tell you guys to go onto my YouTube channel and look for that video as it's a little bit of a complex um, thing to explain through a Twitch stream. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the Twitch stream, I would highly uh, be very thankful if you guys follow the channel for future streams. You can follow me on Twitter to see whenever I stream. You can also like the video if you're watching it on YouTube or subscribe if you are watching it on YouTube and you enjoy this content. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully I see you next time. Peace.